Hi, everybody. So, working on the tail cone uh, bulkheads. We've already done the back three in the previous part of videos, and so now working on the forward two. So, so these bulkheads are very large, and so it's just much easier for them to be in two pieces. So it's time for a little devinylization. Again, now I talked a couple of videos back about the instructions for these, and it's it's interesting. Um, whenever you have number forty holes uh, that get dimpled, now if they're not going to be set up for match drilling yet, or if they don't need to be final drilled, like if there's going to be two pieces, then you don't actually do any deburring or anything like that. The instructions just tell you go straight to the dimpling. And I actually asked a couple people about this, and I said, no, you know, it, you know, you need to be able to infer when the deburring needs to happen. You will know. Kind of like I was talking about with those back bulkheads. You know, you've got quarter inch or damn near quarter inch thick p strips of aluminum for attach points and they're supposed to be riveted in if you can't put the rivets through them well then I think you kinda need to drill them out don't you and when you start thinking cracks and stress cracks you're like oh I also think I need to deburr these holes and again so these chapter pages don't ever actually talk about deburring these parts so first thing of course I do by instinct is I go around and I deburr the edges and all the holes and just to give you a scale of time don't forget every minute of these videos is 20 minutes in real life And then, of course, I disappear. So, I, I, I'm not actually sure if I'm going to continue working on the tail cone, uh, I mean, outside of doing the bulkheads. Uh, so, just prepping the bulkheads is, is nice, and that's one thing, because literally most of what this, of the tail cone is, is just bulkheads and skins and, sh and stiffeners. I mean, there's, uh, there's, some, there's some angle plates to put on the bottom, because you will have accessories that go into the back, like you'll have your ELT goes in the back. Uh, people that want to put other things back there will be able to put them back there. I'm thinking about putting an air conditioner back there. So, I mean, it's not just bulkheads and stringers. There are other things. And there's my buddy Ted. My buddy Ted uh, felt the need to come by and do some riveting. He'd had a hard week, so he was coming to help and work on the battery stringers for the ELT. So, uh, I mean, at this point, with all of the bulkheads done, that's great. I mean, that's a, that's a good amount of work. Because the very next steps, unfortunately, start with, uh, you know, starting to put all these bulkheads on one of the skins. And you need to have some sawhorses, and you need, you know, you're going to be in big, uncomfortable positions. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm ready for that yet. I think what's going to happen, and please tell me if I'm wrong on this. You know, I'm trying to save space, but I'm also trying to save my sanity. So I've got, uh, I'll say, three quarters of a wing sitting in my new wing cradle. I still have to do all the wiring, which I've been studying on. Uh, i got to do the aileron actuation. I've got to do the, uh, the wing tip fairing. Also, I have to install the lights on the tip of that wing tip fairing. So, you know, there's still a lot. You think that you're done, and you're like, oh, I might be like halfway or blah, blah, blah. What's that joke? Uh, there's a joke on the Vans forums about 90% down, 90% left to go. So I've got a wing sitting there. I've got the other tank for the other wing done, just because I wanted to get that tank out of the way before I ran out of sealant. Which, uh, actually, I did. I did run. I've run I've, I have run out of sealant, so... Uh, I, I think I have enough for about another, I might be able to scrape one 50 gram or two ounce sample out of there. 
I don't think that's enough to put the uh, the baffle on. I don't think so. But I might try. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to try for a few days anyway. I put that uh, I put that fuel sender back on on Friday. Let's see, Friday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay, so this Wednesday, in a couple of days, I will try another full leak test of the tank. And if that's happy, then I'll see how much I can scrape out. If I can't scrape enough of the sealant out, no big deal. I'll just order a 3.5 ounce tube from Vans. That'll definitely be more than enough. I won't need any more sealant after that until who knows when, but I will, you know. At least I've gone through the court and I didn't let it go bad and I got the other tank done. So I got the tank done. I haven't even started on the other spar or anything. As you can see, it's sitting against the wall back there. Uh, I still haven't done any of the empennage uh, fairing work at all. Actually, I still need to go do the. Uh, I actually have to go do the counterweights on the uh, elevators. I never actually did any of those because I, I didn't have a way to, to saw them down. So uh, there's a lot left to do, you know, if I'm honest. And so I'm just not sure what to work on next. I think I'm just going to do the wiring for the left wing. Um, I've been looking into it and. The wiring harness that comes with Vans is nice, but it's not what exactly what I need. Uh, I'll be getting into that when I start doing the electrical stuff, because I've got to show you the diagrams. You know, I've got two sets of lights. Well, I've got one landing light. Uh, I've got the fly LEDs for my nav strobes. And I'll have one line for, this for the left wing, for the pedo, pardon me, for the pedo heat. So that's pretty much it. I have thought about throwing an extra line out towards the tip in case I wanted to have some kind of camera mount, but uh, not sure yet. So, Anyway, that's where we are. Done with the bulkheads, and I'm about to go out to the hangar today, so I'll figure it out, and I'll talk to you later.